Hello everyone. So Musu is um, has a degree in psychology and a master's in human resource management. I have worked with PwC as an HR professional um, in Nigeria and now live in Canada. I'm currently a change management specialist. But I have passion for people, passion for people to identify um, themselves and grow and become who God has ordained them to be. In line with that passion, I have gone through lots of personality tests and assessments, but I'm so happy that I discovered them. Bestman is um, a scientific method or an assessment that was uh, created by Rogers Beckman and he found it way back when he was in the um, US Army during the World War II and decided to come up with um, a tool that could identify psychological differences of individuals within his team and this test well, is it's a test that gives like four things it makes you identify yourself or discover yourself so it's a self um, concept delivery um, assessment. It also helps you to identify your need behavior, so social expectations of you, right? And it also makes you know your stress behavior and interestingly your professional um, For me, this time has been a good time for me to um, come up with materials that will help to share with people and partner pe with people to achieve their goals and to get to their ordained um, destiny. So I think we should all take time to reflect and ask ourselves um, questions. Am I in the right path right now? What do I need to do to, to, to make good use of my time at this, um, this period? What resources can I key into? Because I um, learned yesterday, I, I know about it, but there are some good audio books that one can listen to, right? To develop a skill that you think will take you to the next level. So right now, I currently have a client that I'm trying to build a business um, proposal for and come up with a structure for his business. We're actually at the initial stage, but it's an interesting one because he has a, um, a furniture company that he's trying to build up. So I'm working with some um, entrepreneurs and it's so interesting that uh, it's good for entrepreneurs to discover themselves first before deciding what business or what um, sector to go in. So as I said earlier, on the Beckman tool, it's a good one to identify yourself and know your interest. And it's good to know your interest because if you are interested in an area, it will give you joy and satisfaction. So I think it will be good to encourage entrepreneurs to first go through the Beckman assessment to identify their interest and then go from there. So the, the um, client I'm working with uh, has been able to identify his interest and his passion for creativity. And so I think it's a good start for him to work with him. Like, oh yes. I currently have a coach and I have mentors which I meet with once a month. And I also send emails and um, text messages of have like chats with them for me it's very key to have a coach because it will improve you it will help you to be focused it will hold you accountable and it will help you prepare for challenges that you have or even sometimes it's good just to have someone you can reach out to to share your your challenges or your concerns or your struggles and you'll be so surprised how the coach 
will make things so easy for you. Coaches will not get you the job. They will not like go through the interview with you. They won't do the interview for you. But they will help you um, align your CV to the job and um, try to bring out um, areas of strength that you need to focus on and exercise at interviews. And it will also boost your confidence. You just need some affirmation from people and um, improve your soft skills and interview skills. It's also a good way for you to um, have someone where your goals are shared and someone that can help you track your goals or find ways to mis mitigate any risk that might um, come your way not for you to um, achieve those goals. For me, having a balance is key. When you have a balance, it will be um, you'll be able to balance your personal and your professional life. Right now, we are home, working from home, or some are just at home, hoping that someday this will be all over. It will be good for you to find time to reach out to people, find time to develop yourself, find time to stay positive and think of positive things. Exercise, exercise is really key. So um, find time to take your walk or find interesting ways to come up with like a treadmill. I've seen so many interesting videos online. And again, eat right. Make sure you're eating healthy and not taking too much. Um, live right. So take time to study the word or take time to, to, um, to think through things and think of um, what has been going on and how you'll be able to come out of this. My last one is stay positive and think positive. Try as much as possible not to take so much of the junk on social media. It can be very, very overwhelming. It was Just three steps to achieve your goals. If you have goals, somewhere up in your mind but you don't have it um, written out then for me you've not started so the three steps that I I always share with people is you have to have your goals listed out so dream big but not decent I have big dreams right now this is just my starting point but I know that it's going to be big in few years so and I have it all um, written out I have my goals for the next 30 years if God spares our lives right so I think it will be good for you to take time now because we have time to reflect and write out our goals write down your goals then visualize your goals when you visualize your goals you will be able to see the end from the beginning and if you can see the end from the beginning then you can achieve your goals because you know that you're on track and anytime you're going off track you can say oh no this is not what I saw right and if you can visualize your goals you'll be able to also see possible obstacles that might stop you from achieving those goals and trying to find ways by which you can mitigate those uh, obstacles the second step will be plan if you have your goals written out and laid out the next step will be for you to plan and create a to-do checklist i have a to-do checklist which is like on a monthly or two months or three months most most likely quarterly basis and i always sit down sometimes i'm like what i've not done this so having a checklist is a good way for you to keep track of your of your goals and where you are at in achieving those goals set realistic time frame so if for instance right now you are still working from home then you need to set realistic time frame to say um during this time i might not be able to achieve blah 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 goals because i have just few hours to do this but if for instance right now you're not going to work and you have the whole day to yourself i think it would be a good time for you to go back to your drawing board and set realistic time frames for to achieve your goals then proactively uh, mitigate risk as i said earlier on if you have the time frames and the uh, time frame set out and you already have a, a visual um, 
uh, reality of your goals, then you'll be able to, to see obstacles that might come your way, maybe technical um, challenges or some skills that you still need to um, build on or to um, acquire to be able to get those goals. So proactively mitigate those um, risks and then track achievements. Come up with celebrations, right? Um, last week I had a goal that I was working with and by I was so busy Friday, Saturday, Sunday and by Sunday night I was able to achieve that goal and my kids were excited with me because everybody felt the joy I had the fact that I was able to achieve that goal. So tracking achievements and celebrating those wins are a very good way by which um, you can um, achieve your goals. Then the next one is act. So work smart. There are so many um, ways by which we can work smartly now, especially with the technology um, um, facilities or um, tools that we have in place so try to work smart and then be committed i always say if you have it written out and you can visualize your goals and you know that this goal is not just for your own personal achievement but it will impact lives i think it will make you more committed to say there's somebody out there that needs this to be there there's somebody out, out there that needs me to bring out this thing so commitment is really key because you're not doing it for yourself but you're doing it to impact lives and get an accountable partner so that's why it's good to have a coach because if you have one that is, uh, that, um, is there to make you accountable the person will always remind you of your goals and refine your plans so right now I think it'll be good if for instance in January you had your goals all set out the time frame, I think it would be a good time to go back to refine your plans, to reflect and refocus and reset, refine your plans and um, make sure that it's aligned and celebrate wins. Things that I want you to avoid, avoid excuses, avoid procrastination and avoid distraction right so um if there are things that are distracting you now take time to set those goals and uh, mitigate all those things so that you can achieve your goal it's um be specific be specific with your goals don't just don't be vague be specific with your goals and make sure they are measure, measurable and they are achievable and they are result oriented and they are like time bound right so for for me being specific with your goals is thinking through things what do i want to accomplish not just write what do i want to accomplish from this right why is the goal important to me or to the world right uh, why is it valuable to me? What resources or skills do I need to achieve to achieve this goal? So like what skills do I need? And I also said that is this really my interest? Will I excel here? Don't just go into goals or write goals because you see your friends going into stuff. No. Make sure that your goals are for you not for somebody else or just don't go for goals because somebody came up with an idea that oh this would be a good thing to do or a good business to go into no make sure it's your own goal and it's your interest because if you don't have interest in it it will not make you committed and if you are not committed there's a possibility that you won't achieve this goal so i think the um the backman tool which i spoke about for the career exploration or your interest exploration will be a good start for you to find out if the goals you or the the goals you think you can achieve right are really your interest not just what people are suggesting to you and then measurable the question you should ask yourself is how will i know when it is accomplished so you must have some measures some things in place to say 
okay if um, I'm to get a job like a change management job I'm doing last year I had to um, go through some professional exams to to get that skill and make sure I have a certification for it so for me the goal was oh I need this skill I got this skill and then I got the job and so for me the measure for me was if I get this skill and I get the job then I know that that goal has been accomplished then you have a check mark oh yeah done what's the next goal that I need to achieve so not just having just one goal you need to have numerous goals but make sure they are realistic and so we go to the A of the smart is how can I achieve this goal so you need to find out and if it's the problem for you to um, understand or to find a way on achieving these goals I think you need a coach or someone that you that is um, that you can trust to provide um, professional expert um, advice or expertise to um, um, to you right so how can I achieve these goals you need to list it out and make sure that and this is at this time you'll be able to um, identify barriers and also come up with ways by which you can mitigate those barriers right do i have the time to uh, complete the relevant qualification or achieve the required skills effectively i think yes you need to sit down so as i said earlier on i had a goal in 2018 and so i had to search to find out how i could get skills in change management and so i just had to 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 be real to myself to say when will this goal be achievable right and then you need to make it realistic is it relevant to the direction i want my life and career to take i know many of us have been privileged to get into careers that we are excited about but some people are still stuck in careers that they are not excited about but I think it's a good time for us to reflect and refocus and reset right and see where can I make a U-turn how can I make changes to my current um, situation so you just need to ask yourself this question is it relevant to the direction I want my life and career to take right is my current career online uh, in line with my um, future goals and is my um is it the right time you know there are some times that in your career you are at the peak of maybe a position or something or maybe people ahead of you are not resigning or retiring and you just seem stuck it's just a good time for you to evaluate and evaluate your current situation and see is it the right time for me to take the book big move to be an entrepreneur is it the right time for me to launch my goals or something so what is my order of priority i know some some people might be at the stage of their life where they are thinking of marriage and it might be or looking for kids or childbirth and all so there are some times where we need to prioritize our goals is it family first at this time is it my career at this time or is it thinking of retirement at this time i just think we need to order our priorities and if you order your priorities it will make you have realistic goals and a good plan and so you need to have a time assigned to each goal this goal i want to achieve it by 2021 or 2022 or even june 2020 right make sure you put time lines or a specific timeline to your goal talk more on the Beckman tool and just to share some of the differences I have seen with Beckman and um, the other personality tools out there uh, I must say that the other personality tools are good but I will ponder more on Beckman which I am more comfortable with so the Beckman tool is um it's it's reliable uh, scientifically reliable and valid in the sense that the error it gives is like 0 0.01 which is extremely good right and it doesn't just box you so it gives you um like 
four boxes but it doesn't just box you in one box you know when we say box we have like the red so the jewels and we have the orange the analyzers and then we have Binker, which are the blue and we have the communicators which are the green but this doesn't just box you <coughs> into one and says oh you're a thinker or you're yeah, an introvert or just an extrovert what it does is it um, it makes you because it gives you like your usual behavior right and it gives you your um, need behavior and it gives you your stress behavior so it tells you that sometimes when your usual behavior like for me I'll, I'll share my own profile so my usual behavior I'm between a doer and an analyzer so that's a red and an orange so what what does a doer do so high energy team member gives direct feedback makes quick decisions and makes practical choices and speaks their minds, right? And as an analyzer, I'm also an independent thinker, insistent on processes, fear and trusting, and more focused on tasks. So that's my usual behavior. But it was so interesting to find out that my need behavior, which is so funny, which is almost like opposite of my usual behavior every day, I, I I always I think because people think I am like I take decisions quickly they always expect me to make decisions or be very rational about things but I actually need people to to um, to to give me time like planning before acting um, I need people to let them know that I'm a good listener and I need people to be sensitive to me and to my needs and not confrontational or making or uh, making thorough decisions, right? So why I like the Beckman is it doesn't just box you to one and you think, oh yes, I'm the do and analyzer. But it also exposes you to your need behavior. And this tool is a very good one because it's it's good you have it you can share it with your spouses or even with your team members because it makes people know you and understand you right the other one i want us to focus on is the occupational interest piece so it's so interesting that you have to go through 298 questions in like 30 to 40 minutes but there are no right or wrong answers right so the occupational interest one is so good because when I went through it, I, I, I felt so bad for myself that, ooh, I wish I had the opportunity to go through this assessment when I finished secondary school. I might have taken a different school, but right now, for, for like my first choice, but it's so interesting that my current HR experience and what I do right now is still in line with my interest, so I was excited. It was not like a bad deal, but I think it will be good for you guys to have an assessment done and um, you can always reach out to me if you want to know much more about the tool I'll be very willing to share um, my um, knowledge about the tool and book a session with you interested in is helping people revamp their CVs or have a discussion on how they can achieve their goals. So I might not write your goals for you, but I don't mind being an accountable partner to keep you on track, to say where you at on this piece and how you plan to achieve your goals. So if you need, um, we are looking out for a coach or you are looking out for an accountable partner or you're looking out to know much about the Beckman tool and you think you have interest or you want to discover yourself or you have a teenager from 16 and above or anyone that is 65 or 60 or 50 and is planning retirement or planning life outside of work or wants to have a plan B um, you can always reach out to me on time to explore with Mosun at gmail.com or on my um, Instagram um, handle page, which is time to explore with Mosu.